We are back with another judicial interview. Well, I'll say judicial candidate interview. Three, two, one. And we are back with another judicial candidate interview. This morning, could I have you, I guess, introduce yourself and tell us what you're running for? Yes, good morning. Um, my name is Judge Christy Solverson. I'm an associate judge in Jackson County. I've served the people of Jackson County for 13 years and I'm running to uh, fill the vacancy left by Judge William Schwartz, who is the resident circuit judge in Jackson County, and he is retiring after 32 years of judicial service. Okay, so tell us why you want to continue to hold this position. Well, um, I am an associate judge, and associate judges are appointed by the circuit judges. I was appointed in 2005, and I have served for 13 years. But there is a difference between associate judges and circuit judges. Okay. Although we hear the t same type of cases, um, circuit judges are more administrators. I tell people that they are similar to a board of trustees, okay. that they are entrusted with uh, implementing court rules and procedures for the judicial system and um, working to ensure that we have a fair and impartial and adequate judicial system in Southern Illinois. Um, circuit judges work with other circuit judges within our circuit in other counties. They work to implement court rules and procedures and programs such as the foreclosure mediation program. And they also work with other justice partners, uh, the circuit clerk's office, uh, the county board, the sheriff's department, uh, probation and the like. So it's more of a leadership role. Okay. So how do you feel um, in particular that you fit the requirements of this position? I have uh, served the people of Jackson County for 13 years. Uh, I feel like I have prepared for this position. I have the experience to take the next step, if you will. Okay. Um, and I have uh, worked on circuit-wide programs uh, with the other uh, circuit judges. And I have served on uh, committees both locally and statewide. I'm one of seven judges in the state of Illinois uh, to serve on the Judicial College Board of Trustees. I was appointed by the Supreme Court two years ago. And the Judicial College works to ensure uh, that all justice partners have continuing uh, education, whether that be judges, probation officers, circuit clerks, guardian ad litems, or the like. Now, in this position, Ethical conduct is very key. Yes. So how do you hold yourself accountable? That's a very good question. Integrity and ethics are uh, the core of our judicial system. And the people need to know that they can trust judges and that judges speak truth. Um, I hold myself accountable. I have uh, other judges, uh, of course, the attorneys, uh, the public, uh, and my faith. Um, the other thing is I, I serve on the Judicial Performance and Evaluation Committee for the state, okay. uh, and that is a committee that works to ensure that judges are doing their jobs adequately and uh, to help judges be better judges, um, both ethically, legally, and temperament. In terms of what we're seeing here in Southern Illinois, what are some of our specific issues that we are confronting that you have to confront? Um, we in the courts have seen an increase uh, in pro se or self-represented litigants. Um, we have also seen an increase in um, issues with mental health. Uh, okay. The mental health issues uh, have affected our courts across the board and in all of our dockets, uh, as well as the opioid epidemic. We hear about okay. that and we hear about that in the press but we see uh, the effects of the opioid epidemic, not just in the criminal docket, but also in uh, juvenile abuse and neglect, juvenile delinquency and the like. Now we had talked a little bit about how your experience has prepared you for this role. And as judge, you deal with criminal cases, civil cases, so kind of add to that in terms of how that prepares you for that. The, cri the criminal cases, the civil cases, how it prepares you for this role. Well, as a judge for 13 years, I have uh, presided over all types of cases. Uh, I've presided over jury trials and bench trials. And I think that uh, presiding over those matters uh, prepares 
uh, one to be as circuit judges in assigning dockets and knowing what the needs are within our local judiciary. Now, can you pr provide an example of how judges um, act and rule impartially in a situation? Well, I don't know that I can provide an example of that, but I do know that the role of judge, that is our role, is to be fair and just, to listen to the evidence and, and rule impartially. Um, we uh, strive to maintain uh, impartiality with our continuing education, um, speaking with other judges. And, you know, I remember um, I had a case early in my judicial career um, that was very much in the public light. The courtroom was full of individuals. There was a lot of pressure. Uh, but our role is to look at the facts, to listen to all of the evidence, to follow the law, and rule impartially um, based upon what we have before us. So, <clears throat> next question, how does the position that um, you're definitely vying for, how does that help when it comes to controlling some of these costs? There's a lot of Southern Illinois communities, yes. and we've done stories on yes. them, where the cost of the courtroom is just, it's a lot. Cost definitely is a factor. Some of those costs we can control, some we can't as judges. I know that um, within Jackson County, we encourage uh, one of our large costs are jury trials. Um, mm -hmm. paying jurors and bailiffs to be present. Uh, we encourage the attorneys, if they are going to settle or come to a plea agreement, we encourage them to attempt to do that if they can prior to the date of trial to uh, defray costs as far as jurors are concerned. We have other costs uh, such as uh, appointing special counsel okay. and uh, as well as uh, evaluations such as mental health evaluations. Um, kind of switching subjects here, I wanted to talk about temperament. <laughs> so how does your personality play into the courtroom scenario? What do you bring to the bench personality-wise? I very much strive to have a judicial temperament on the bench. Uh, in meeting people uh, during the selection process, I, I tell individuals, if you want to know what type of judge I am, if you want to know what my temperament is, speak to the people that work with me. Uh, our jury bailiffs, our sheriff's deputies, um, the, our circuit clerks. They see me on my good days and they see me on my bad days. Sure, yeah. But it is very important for a judge to uh, bring good judicial temperament to the bench. Many times the courtroom, um, it can be a place that uh, emotions run high, whether it's with attorneys or with pro se litigants. and. Uh, Many times attorneys and individuals take their cue from the judge as yeah. far as temperament. It is our job to um, maintain the integrity and control of the courtroom, but it is also important that we do it in a respectful way to um, both the attorneys and the litigants. It is their courtroom, it is not my courtroom. I am just entrusted by the people to maintain the integrity of that courtroom. All right. And since you're being elected to a judicial seat, how do you keep politics out of this entire thing? We have seen a lot of these ads. We have seen yes. a lot going on in terms of what's in front of our yes. faces. Yes. So how do you keep politics out of that, especially since you have to affiliate with the party? That is a very good question. For 13 years as associate judge, and out of all of the judicial candidates running in Southern Illinois, I've been on the bench the longest out of all of them. So these 13 years as an associate judge, I've been apolitical. Um, my job is to be fair and just. It's to rule impartially no matter who is in front of me. Um, and that is what I have strived to do. Uh, but then running for a circuit judge, uh, we are required to jump into this political mm -hmm. arena. So being apolitical for 13 years and uh, priding myself on being fair and impartial despite politics now into the political arena, I still do that. Um, I am um, very happy to say that uh, we have not engaged in any negativity within uh, my race. Uh, my opponent is a, a fine person. Uh, we speak to one another and uh, we, we do not feel that we need to go down that um, negative road. I feel that um, my credentials speak for themselves. 
um, and that um, people need to do their homework and look at experience and right. um, look at um, the uh, contributions I've made to the legal community and hopefully um, we will keep politics out of it. Awesome, thank you. So I guess one hot topic that we definitely have to ask, especially since we're a TV station, is what are your thoughts and opinions when it comes to cameras in the courtroom? Uh, <laughs> cameras in the courtroom, well, the First Judicial Circuit uh, has a policy, a media policy on cameras in the courtroom. And Illinois does allow cameras in the courtroom, but we have guidelines. Uh, matter of fact, Channel 3's news director was at our judicial meeting um, a couple of Fridays ago mm -hmm. and showing us the various cameras and the um, equipment that would be used in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. But there is definitely a balancing test. So we have a, a policy in the First Circuit. Okay. Um, there is a, a request process to have cameras in the courtroom, but the balancing test is to again, maintain the integrity of the courtroom. It is my job as a judge to protect um, the jurors uh, who serve in our uh, courtrooms, as well as the witnesses, and uh, above all, make sure that the parties have a fair and impartial trial. So it is a balancing test between equipment and media and fair and impartial trials. Um, one of our challenges in Southern Illinois are our um, aging courthouses and courtrooms. Some of yeah. our courthouses and courtrooms True. simply aren't equipped to have that equipment um, and protect the jurors as we need to do so. Other um, courthouses, we have a new courthouse in Union County and uh, Williamson County has a state-of-the-art courtroom as well. We have made strides in Jackson County uh, to have uh, media outlets within our courtroom. But, you know, some of our courtrooms just aren't there yet. No, I know, and I've been in some of yes. the um, ones that are, are definitely um, a little older right. um, structures, so definitely right. agree with you there, especially when you've got a packed Courtroom, exactly. Sure. We certainly have challenges with regard to uh, media in the courtroom. But again, uh, despite the challenges, uh, my role as a judge is to maintain the integrity of that courtroom and to ensure that the litigants have a fair and impartial trial. So are you saying you're not comfortable with the cameras? Oh, I don't know that I'm saying I'm not comfortable. I think in the right situation, uh, cameras, uh, could be welcomed, okay. but I think that there needs to be a balancing test between um, providing that fair trial and making sure that the media is not going to be a distraction okay. to the process. So case by case. I think that's, that's a very good assessment, yes. Case by case analysis, and that's why there is a, an application process, if you will, or a request for media in the courtroom. Okay. One last thing I wanted to ask you about. You did very well on your um, <laughs> judicial advisory poll. Thank you. Um, definitely recommended it, had down here. How much stock should the voters take into this? Because this isn't them themselves. That's correct. The judicial, the advisory poll, the judicial advisory poll is, um, it is uh, sponsored by the Illinois State Bar Association. So the poll is conducted by judges and attorneys. So those are the judges that work with me. Those are the attorneys that are in my courtroom. Uh, I am very humbled uh, by my ratings with the Judicial Advisory Poll. And I say that because those are my colleagues and those are the attorneys that appear in front of me. Um, I don't make everybody happy. So those are the, the attorneys that I rule for and I rule against based upon the facts in front of me. So I'm very humbled by those scores. Uh, I would tell yeah, the public- pretty high across the board and again, you're recommended, so. Thank you. Um, I, but I would tell the public to use the judicial advisory poll as a tool. Use it as a tool, uh, those are the, um, that is the recommendation. Those are the opinions of judges and lawyers. Um, but also, as I stated, speak to the individuals that are in my courtroom. Uh, speak to the individuals that have been in front of me and uh, use it as a tool in making decisions. Well, but I think the important thing is uh, the public needs to be informed. All right. 
Well, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. I appreciate it this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, Evie.